my name is Andy Robertshaw. Um, I am a, a, a teacher, a lecturer, and as you probably saw in the coach, make television documentaries. This is um, an example of a soldier of the 29th Division, of which the Newfoundland Regiment was a part, wearing on his shoulders the distinctive red half diamond that would also have been worn by members of the Newfoundland Regiments. And this particular soldier is now equipped, ready to go into action, with the exception of, I'm going to give it to him now, a rifle. Now, if we just look at him, you can see steel helmet, very distinctive, webbing equipment or leather equipment, his gas mask, his respirator, shovel for digging in, boots and putties. But rather than actually using him as an example, I'm going to go, you give me your rifle back and then uh, you're happy to go and just take a seat for a moment. Uh, we're going to have somebody to demonstrate what a soldier of the Newfoundland Regiment would have been wearing on the morning of the 1st of July. Oh, okay, where can I have my victim, please? What's your name? Fantastic turnaround. Okay, you're about to become Tommy, the British soldier. These are a pair of real First World War short johns. They're not long johns. These are for summer wear. You'll notice that they have um, no elastic in them. And uh, because of that, they have two distinctive um, loops at the front here. Yeah? I wonder at any point when someone can tell me what the loops are for. And they're not for just pulling them up. There is another reason for them. So, arms out in front. That goes there. Right. Okay. So, you're now wearing your backpack. You've also got here two pints of water. You've got pouches for 150 bullets. I couldn't put any bullets in uh, because customs get very worried about that kind of thing. Uh, you've then obviously got various other bits of kit that you're going to need. So, so far two pints of water, 150 bullets and you're looking quite wary. What you actually need now is means of keeping yourself clean, tidy and being able to eat. So, we're going to give you some soap, we'll give you a sewing kit. We'll give you a knife, fork and spoon. We'll give you a delightful toothbrush. We'll give you a razor. So you can have a shave. Remember you're a bloke, so you will need to shave. It's not for you doing your legs. I'm gonna give you a comb. I'm gonna do a mystery item. <coughs> button stick, thank you very much. So when you've got your buttons and you're being inspected, they need to be clean. You can polish them up without getting polish on everything else. With it, we're going to give you the things that you really, really need. Here, obviously, we're going to give you a um, tin mug. We're going to give you a shaving brush. We're going to give you a spare set of boot laces in case your boot laces snap. Because amazingly, you cannot go to the shops and buy boot laces on the Battle of the Somme. With it, we're going to give you a towel. And you'll notice that the towel is what colour? White. But your handkerchief is not white. Why do soldiers not get given white handkerchiefs? You can't surrender with a khaki handkerchief. We need to give you some food. So, tea and sugar in a special little tin, it's really in there. With it we give you milk, condensed milk, you don't get fresh milk. With it we give you corn, beef, and we also give you your McConaughey's rations, pork and beans. With it, we give you your means of cooking, your mess tin, miniature frying pan, yeah? And also then a vessel so that you can actually cook in it. Or this is your washing bowl in the morning as well. And with it, you're going to give them a biscuit. And the biscuit is army ration biscuit. It's made from flour, fat, salt. That's all it is. And you will smash it up and use it to thicken your stew. You don't eat it like a normal biscuit. With it, we're going to give you your Tommy cooker. Tommy is the nickname of the soldier, and therefore it's a cooker for Tommy. And basically, it's a little spirit burner, and when you're cooking, what you can do is get it going in your trench, and that will help you. So in September of 1916, we have a system of two tags. One stays with you, the other one is cut off for identification purposes. So the battle teaches us some very important lessons. But don't worry. You might not die. You might just get wounded. 
and sewn into your uniform, always in the same place, we have a little pocket just there on the front of the tunic, always in the same place. Why does every single soldier have the pocket in the same place? So you know where it is. You need a gas mask. And this is an example of the gas mask worn in the Battle of the Somme. This one is a replica one, and it is known as the boogie-eyed monster. I will not make you put it on, but if you did, you breathe in through the bag, you breathe out through the valve, and when you do that, it makes a wonderful, wonderful farting noise, okay? So, British soldiers in the trenches, the Germans always knew when we put them on and were practicing, because there would be farting noises and lots of laughing, okay? But this is very important to you, so you'll keep it folded up, ready for use, inside your haversack, ready for use. And that will go on your left or your right hip. So, in to there goes that. Let's button it up, and then we'll put that on your shoulder. Okay, so, stick out your left arm. That goes over your head, and that's fine. And what you've got here is your Princess Mary tin. Given Christmas 1914 to all servicemen and women and sailors and airmen. Box of matches in there, very sensibly, in a little outer wrapper that doesn't get crushed. With it, you're a really sensible soldier and you've taken loads of sandbag and you've cut it up and soaked it in candle wax. Why would you soak sandbag in candle wax? It's wet and cold, it's raining in the trench. You want a cup of tea and your tommy cook has run out. This is your emergency means of starting a fire. But you're an even more sensible soldier than we'd think about because you know that very, very importantly, lovely and dry and snug in your tin box, you have pieces of newspaper that have been cut up. Why would any soldier have bits of newspaper cut up in a tin box. Yeah. Do you remember, yeah, who was that? Who said it? Yeah. What is it for? Uh, you use it to like... Yeah, 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 yeah. I love the action, that was good, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Spot on, okay. And the last thing that we're gonna give you is gonna be your rifle. Hold that across your body and just tell everybody how it feels. Heavy. I've given you no water. I've given you no rations. You have no hand grenades. You should have two hand grenades. And the question has got to be, with my volunteer here, as my soldier of the Royal Newfoundland Regiments, how much of this stuff and what she's wearing could we leave behind on the morning of the 1st of July? How much could we leave behind? No, you need all of it and more, don't you? Oh, by the way, modern soldiers wear bulletproof jackets. They have fully closed helmets. You have got a steel helmet on your head, otherwise there is no body armour. Oh, if I take the you've got an imaginary bullet, and perhaps and then a real hand, and then a real hand. Uh, lift it up across your body, and now look at them and look worried, but don't stand there. Get your cameras, this is going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a warry face? <laughs> it's a smiley face. It's his fault. <laughs> <laughs>